Hello and welcome to another Flash with Python tutorial video. In the last video, uh, we were working on our website and we added a simple uh, graph example using the JavaScript high charts uh, graphing application here. And uh, when we were doing, while we were doing this, we also showed how you can uh, use the same template for everything and basically ask the question of what kind of page is this. So we can include all of the HTML pages, so to speak, in one HTML page by asking simple questions. Now, uh, just to give a quick refresher in case anybody doesn't remember that, this is what it looked like initially. So um, this is our index.html uh, file. And what we were doing was asking the question if page type was equal to graph, then we would load basically the graph and all of the JavaScripts, uh, JS scripts. Uh, necessary for the graph. Now, this is actually not the preferred method uh, for doing anything like like this in Flask. Now, if your page difference is basically this subtle, um, and maybe you have a very simple website, like a lot of people might, you know, want to make just a simple static website where you've got pretty much every page is almost uniformly the same. You might have a couple of different pages. There's not really too much reason why you would make a whole, like another. Um, template or like you would do what we're about to show but if you continue adding stuff like this like if you have like 15 different pages um, then it starts to make a lot of sense to go ahead and move them into separate um, separate pages so for scalability purposes um, this is probably not the best method to use so now what I'm going to show you guys is a little more um, complex method but it, it'll hopefully make just as much sense as this did and that's going to be the extension ability. So you add these, these extends tags, and it allows us to basically have a what is known usually as like a header and a footer file. We can actually combine those first of all, so it can be just like a, your header and footer file. I'll call it header for now. But it contains both the header and the footer. And so it's a little, little different than what you'll probably uh, have seen before. But what we can do is we make basically a container, and we can specify everything around what is in that container, but then that container itself can be very um, custom. So uh, with that, let's go ahead and get started. First, what I want to do is let's go ahead and clean up this index.html page. Um, so right now we've got this like nasty nav bar. I just kind of wanted to add the nav bar to show you guys adding the nav bar, but now let's go ahead and clean it up. For now, um, let's go to the top here. First of all, we don't want brand. We're going to call it, let's see if I can zoom in too. There we go. So it's easier for you all to see what I'm doing. Uh, that's good. So first of all, we want to get rid of brand here, and I'm going to call this uh, home for now. We'll still leave the class like that uh, because that's for our CSS, so we'll leave it there. Uh, href instead of the pound sign, which takes us nowhere, we're going to make it take us home with a simple forward slash. Now, uh, let me zoom out a little bit here. Uh, we'll come over here, just uh, straight. Basically, this is our main uh main link here but then you come down here and basically the, uh, just for the reason why this is separated in a different div is uh, let's go back over to our website real quick if we are if we do this I believe yeah so if we have a full nav bar it's for like the responsiveness but if we have a full nav bar we ha we see brand link link drop down link drop down but say the user is on a, like a cell phone or something their screens more like this and you see brand still shows, but everything else has gone off the nav bar. To get to it, you'd have to click over here, and then all that stuff comes back. But brand always stays up at the top. So um, that's why it's in its separate nav bar, just, or uh, div, div tag nav bar. Anyway, um, just wanted to show that. So anyway, home will always be there. Um, and then we've got link, link, all this stuff. We've got this drop down. We don't really want any drop downs yet. This is the code to do it if you want it, but for now I'm going to get rid of it. So we'll just highlight all this. If you're in Notepad++ and you're not familiar, uh, usually to like find the beginning and end. So we see this list item is the beginning of drop down. So we can just click that and then here's the end of it. So we can just do this and that gets rid of that. Um, we'll leave the links. Um, I'm going to get rid of active, I think. Uh, we're not really doing anything to handle that, I don't think. Let's go back over here. Fresh. Right. So later on, maybe I'll show you guys how we can handle active, but that's not. That's going to be something we'll do way down the road. Um, so move class active, and we'll just leave it as list item. So we've got link one, link two. We'll keep those, and we'll call link one. We'll just say graph because we have a graph, and then we also have another page which was about us, right? So we'll do about, and then here 
uh, we'll put it graph right now. The actual link is graph example, uh, but we're going to call it graph in a minute, so we'll just put graph there. And then this one will lead to the about page, so slash about in the uh, href there. Now, uh, we don't really need any of this laugh, laughed, left nav bar. Uh, so we get rid of this form here. That was, I think, the search or something. And then we'll get rid of this as well. And that should be good. Let's go ahead and save that and see where we where we uh, are now. So let's refresh. Okay, so now we've got a home, a graph, and about page. Click about, it takes us to about. We click back home, it takes us back home. Graph is not going to work. It's going to give us a 404. Um, I could show you, I think I'll probably show you in a later video, but there's there's a way to handle 404 and 500 for the most part are the two biggest errors. 404, this is obviously very ugly. Um, it's not very friendly to the user and it looks very bad. So, so there is a way in Flask to handle 404s and I'll show you guys that as well. And there's also another way you can handle um, errors. As, um, I, I think I did show you guys actually how to use try and accept now that I think about it. But anyway. Um, moving along, so now we've got our um, our nav bar all set, and now we're ready to kind of modify this page to use the extends uh, syntax. So, what we do now is this is our nav bar. So, like if you if you've ever like made websites in the past, you have like a header and a footer, and then you've got like the actual page in between them. So you have like a header, you like import both header and footer, and then uh, you put the content in the middle. That's kind of what we do here, only. We can we can combine header and footer, so it's not going like uh, linearly, so to speak. So we have a header. We don't even have a footer, but we still want to retain um, these closing tags here, so like the body and all of that. But the stuff that's within the body, we actually don't need that stuff anymore. But I'm gonna go ahead and leave that there for now before I make a mistake and forget um, and forget what what the code was. So we'll leave that there. And for now, I'm going to go ahead and make a copy of index.html. Um, let's see if I can get away with just duplicate in here. Uh, and we're going to call this, um, we'll call it graph.html. And fruit. Okay, so now we've got graph.html in here. And what we want to do is we come up to, um, let's see, let me bring this over here. And um, so first, I want to have us open up index. And in our index page, since we've already made the copy of our graph.html, now we can delete this. But what's going to happen is uh, we can leave this data here. But what we want to get rid of is like this question, if page type equals graph, that's where we would have the new page of, you know, either it's a graph or it could be another page type entirely. It doesn't really matter. We'll go ahead and just delete all of that code. And then we'll come down here. And what we're going to say here is in our um, little code here, we say block under, actually block space body. And then we'll come down here and now we do end lock. And what this is doing is we're going to specify what block body and block is, right? This block of body stuff, whatever it happens to be. We specify that in a new uh, file. So we'll save that for now. And now we'll come over to our graph.html page. Let me bring that up. And right now it looks like this. Now, what we want this this graph page to do is actually um, what's called extend our uh, index.html. And in fact, mm, I meant to take index.html. Uh, now I know why I wanted to save that initially. Um, we can leave it this way. This is fine. But really, index.html should be renamed to like header footer or <laughs> like template.html or something, something better than index probably, but we'll leave it as index now for now. Um, so now this page is going to extend index.html. So what, what is that page? What is, what is graph.html supposed to contain that index.html does not have? Well, that is basically just the calling of the graph function. So this. Uh, we're going to leave the body tags, but we'll get rid of everything else. So uh, this and we're getting rid of this if page type there's no reason for that anymore um, ok 
Okay. And we'll leave... Well, basically, we're going to get rid of... Let's see who... I don't even think this one has a... A daddy. <laughs> I might delete those. And delete all of that. So now all we're left with is this body tag right here. Um, and then the, the chart information within. And what we want to do is we want to be able to take this code and just stuff it right in here. So the way that we do that is at the top of this graph.html, we say... Um, and then our code tags here extends uh, actually we need to use quotes here extends index.html so this extends that HTML uh, file and then now we specify the variable and we're going to say this is your block body and then we'll come down to the very end of our block body and we say um, end block so we'll save that, and now we have graph.html. So uh, we can come over to our init.py here, and we're going to go to the graph page. So right now it says graph example. Remember, we're linking now just to slash graph. So I'm going to go ahead and get rid of this example part. And then down here, we're rendering the template of index.html. Well, now we're going to render graph.html. And let's go ahead and save that. And we'll come over here. And uh, let's just do service Apache to restart. And let's see if we got away with that. We've got about still working and graph works. It says not about page. Let's go ahead and fix that. Um, actually, how is it saying not about? Let's see. I don't think it should be saying that. Oh, okay, that's part of our index page. Um, so we can make an about page as well, I suppose, since we had actually been asking that question. Um, I guess we can we can launch through that really quick. So now for an about page, obviously we were saying like our about page might have a lot of different things in it. You know, we might have different organization. We're probably not going to put any advertisements on our about page. Um, that kind of stuff. So your about page might be a little bit different than your typical page as well. So uh, we can make an about page really quick if you wanted uh, just to run through that one more time. So um, so that just d gives our stuff. Let's just refresh this real quick. Okay. So uh, we've got a graph, we've got our about page, and we've got our home page all working. And so now uh, to add another page, for example, since the last one we had to kind of do some extending stuff, but here what we can do is uh, let's du duplicate graph.html and we're gonna call this about.html. And then we'll open up about.html, come over here. And this time we're not graphing, we're just talking about ourselves. So we'll do this. And did we already get rid of the, let me go back real quick and just grab this. Um, right, so all this was doing initially was just saying contact boxes here. Um, so we'll do this. So we actually our about page mostly just contained um, paragraph t title and paragraph data. So it's not really going to be that fancy, but we'll just say um, contact boxes here. Um, special template only stuff. Okay, something like that. Just so it's a unique template. And we'll restart Apache. And we'll come back over here, refresh, everything's hunky dory. Blah 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 me 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 me. Oh right, we forgot our last step. <laughs> uh, we come up to about and instead of rendering index.html, we render about.html. And we'll come back and restart Apache. Let's try again. There we go. So now we got our contact boxes there, special template only stuff and everything works. So actually our home page is just the index page, but then our graph is a very specific template or at least body of the template and about is a very specific body of the template. And we're not throwing an if statements into our index.html. Uh, so it makes it a little bit easier to read. Now, again, if you're only gonna have like two page types, I don't really see the reasoning uh, why you wouldn't just throw some if statements in there personally. It makes it easier if you're going to change anything that you just change one file instead of having to change two files. Uh, if you're changing something within the body, no matter what, using templates is really useful because, like, say you have 15 pages 
and you want to change the nav bar, <laughs> you've got to go through all 15 pages and change your nav bar, so that's really tedious. So you definitely want to use templates in some form or fashion. Um, if you only have a couple pages, if statement will do it in my opinion, but if you're going to have a lot of different pages or you, you're expecting that you could possibly uh, have a bunch of different pages, then this is the better, the better method. So anyway, that's going to conclude this tutorial on the extending functionality of Flask. If you guys have any questions or comments, feel free to leave them below. As always, thanks for watching, thanks for all the support and subscriptions, and until next time.